My name is Stretto. Welcome to episode two of Pink Elephant Foxtrot. Our artists, soothsayers. In our first episode, I introduced you to my multimedia work of art called Storyboard of a Dream. When I began that project, I found myself placing disc-shaped craft in several of the windows, something I never set out to do intentionally. At first, it was lighthearted and funny. The windows knock it off and turbulence appear in the second row and are still sort of whimsical. But in the weeks and months that followed my first UAP sighting, the images of flying discs took on a more serious tone. In the window Savages Inside the Citadel, the disc above seems to be watching the unrest, immobilized, or perhaps choosing not to intervene. In the last window of row three, shootout at the space-time corral, things get a lot more confrontational. My thoughts were centered on the new Space Force, blasting off soon with no budget cap or congressional oversight. Blowing a hole in the space-time continuum will not be as charming as the way it was portrayed in the movie Back to the Future. Mistakes will be made, and there is a lot at stake. First Sighting, Thursday, February 25th, 2021. It was a little after 9 a.m. on a slightly overcast morning when I was playing with my dog at a local park. I tossed her tennis ball towards the middle of the field, but she wouldn't go after it. When I went to pick up the ball, I suddenly had the strange sensation that there was something right above my head. It felt like an energy field similar to static electricity. As I stood up and looked over my shoulder, I saw a fleet of what had to be about 10 white, luminous, disc-shaped UAPs hovering in the sky no more than about 500 feet above me. Each made small concentric circles as they hovered, like a spinning top, only the objects weren't spinning. They were so close, I felt as if they were bearing down on me. At first, I couldn't breathe. The sight of it was so frightening, I instinctively went into a defensive posture, making an X with my arms to cover my face. I fumbled for my cell phone, but by the time I was able to access the camera, I looked up to see the objects flying off in formation. They moved up and down, synchronized in a wave-like motion resembling a flag on its side, rippling in the wind. This experience was unnerving, to say the least. I remember going home and staring at the UAPs in the first row of Storyboard of a Dream. I had the deep-seated feeling that my choice to include them wasn't a coincidence after all. On the first episode of Pink Elephant Foxtrot, I asserted that there seems to be a message within the media when it comes to the UAP experience, a psychic component that leaves witnesses with very specific thoughts and images. This may seem strange, but I am not the only one who has had this experience. Over 60 elementary school students at the Ariel Elementary School in Zimbabwe were playing outside on September 16, 1994, when they witnessed two saucer-shaped UAPs descend from the sky and land in a nearby field. When the children made eye contact with the occupants, they were given a dire warning about the fate of the Earth, our misuse of technology, and the destruction of the environment. When the children broke their gaze, the images stopped. The first question you have to ask in this case is, do children lie? I will answer that for you. Yes, on an individual basis or in a small group with siblings, classmates, or friends, it is not uncommon. But what about an elaborate lie involving all the students in a school, each recounting the same fantastical story with the same strange and vivid details? Are young children capable of being that organized and lying en masse? Could they stick to a made-up but richly detailed story under intense scrutiny from school officials, parents, the media, and the military? The details in the children's drawings are strikingly similar. The late Harvard professor John Mack, a child psychiatrist, traveled to the Ariel School a few months after the incident to interview the children. You can see these interviews in the documentary film The Phenomenon. If the children had been lying, then it seems logical that at least some would recant their stories as adults. But even years later, the witnesses remain insistent that the incident happened the way they described. The sighting I had on February 25, 2021, also seems to have had a psychic component to it, but this plot point should seem somewhat familiar to science fiction fans. In the 1977 Steven Spielberg film Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the main character becomes obsessed with the image of a mountain after his own UAP encounter. He draws and sculpts the same mountain peak obsessively, not knowing why or what it means. 
Without giving too much of the plot away, he eventually discovers that the mountain is a real place, Devil's Tower, in Wyoming. The concept of premonition through art is not science fiction. It was one of many details culled from real case studies by UAP researcher Jacques Vallée, who was a consultant on the film. Art played a crucial role in getting to the bottom of the truth for the witnesses of the Ariel school sighting, as it did for Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and it would become essential in helping me to understand my own UAP experience. The late psychologist Rollo May also believed there was a message within the medium when it comes to art. At a lecture I attended, Dr. May made the statement that artists are soothsayers. May pointed to Picasso's violent 1937 painting Guernica as a portent of the brutality the rest of the 20th century had to offer, and in hindsight, it's hard to argue against it. Picasso is not the only artist whose work proved premonitory. George Orwell's 1984 has become the storyboard of a world overrun with fascist machinations. And when high-profile scientists like former Google engineer Jeffrey Hinton caustically abandon the development of artificial intelligence, the potential for fictional films like Blade Runner, The Terminator, and 2001 A Space Odyssey becoming reality are not that far-fetched. Not convinced that art can predict real-life events? How about the movie The China Syndrome? Released on March 16, 1979, it tells the story of a nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania that comes close to having a total meltdown. Twelve days after the film was released, the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania had a near total meltdown. Perhaps the similarities were merely coincidences, or is it possible that Dr. May was onto something? Is the trance-like state we enter when we create art also a gateway to a higher level of consciousness? And is that state somehow connected to the UAP experience? Thanks for tuning in to episode two of Pink Elephant Foxtrot. Please help the show out by hitting that subscribe button. Music by Tom Young. For information on how to order fine art prints of any of my UAP, Apparition City, or Storyboard of a Dream images, or if you would like to become a sponsor of the show, please get in touch. Stretto at pinkelephantfoxtrot.com. Coming up on episode three of Pink Elephant Foxtrot, the guests that wouldn't leave. In late October of 2021, a glowing sphere appeared over my neighborhood, returning to the same coordinates nightly over the course of the next month. Turns out the sphere wasn't alone. Photos, videos, and more on episode three of Pink Elephant Foxtrot.